This is a man who is sharp, who is on top of his game, who knows what's going on. Senator Bernie Sanders. This is a very sharp president. Mental acuity is great. Now our great speaker, our partner, who all of these bills we've met. President Biden is absolutely fit. He is sharp, intensely probing, and detail-oriented and focused. Eligible for what I've been able to do with the... Uh... With, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. In a speech from the Oval Office on Wednesday night, President Biden announced that he's withdrawing from the 2024 presidential race. He explained that his decision was driven by a desire to protect the country from the potential consequences of a Trump victory in November. Biden's decision, first announced on Sunday, came after weeks of pressure from top Democratic allies following his faltering performance against Trump in late June. This move has disrupted the already unprecedented race, thrusting Vice President Kamala Harris into the spotlight as the Democratic Party's heir apparent to take on Trump in November. Here are the four key takeaways from Biden's first speech since ending his 2024 campaign and endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris as his successor. I revere this office. I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think it's more important than any title. Although Biden did not mention former President Donald Trump by name, his remarks made it clear that he saw the prospect of his rival's victory in November as a potential disaster for the nation. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. But this sacred task, of perfecting our union. It's not about me, it's about you, your families, your futures. It's about we the people. We can never forget that, and I never have. I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point. One of those rare moments in history when the decisions we make now will determine our fate of our nation and the world for decades to come. America's going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide, do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice, and democracy? Similarly, Biden avoided mentioning his vice president, who is now the clear frontrunner to take on Trump in his absence from the race. Biden made only a brief mention of the concerns about his age that intensified before his decision to withdraw from the presidential race. He stated that he was leaving the race to help heal divisions within the Democratic Party and unite Democrats in the goal of winning. Nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. But there's also a time and a place for new voices, fresh voices, yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. Biden took a moment to express his gratitude to Harris, whom he has endorsed as the Democratic candidate. I made my choice. I made my views known. She's experienced, she's tough, she's capable. She's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. Fresh voices, yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. With many Republicans urging Biden to resign as president following his decision not to seek a second term, he made it clear that he has no intention of doing so. He devoted a significant portion of his speech to listing his administration's policy initiatives, including efforts to boost the economy, build infrastructure, protect civil rights, restore ties with international allies, and counter gun violence. 
For example, we passed the most extensive gun legislation in 30 years. Although I'm not going to rest till we get assault weapons banned, which I did once before when I was a senator. Assault weapons banned. Assault, assault weapons banned. There is no rationale. Deer aren't running through the woods wearing Kevlar vests. He described his time as president as the privilege of my life. Over the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy. I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights, from the right to vote to the right to choose. My fellow Americans, it's been the privilege of my life to serve this nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Claymont, Delaware, one day sit behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office as President of the United States. Biden also pledged to keep calling out hate and extremism, continue working on his cancer moonshot, pursue Supreme Court reforms, support Ukraine in its war with Russia, and seek an end to the fighting in Gaza. We have to decide, do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect? As he read his speech from a teleprompter, Biden occasionally mumbled incoherently. In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, but as, as fellow Americans. Can we do that? Does character in public life still matter? His delivery was, at times, reminiscent of the much-criticized debate performance in late June that caused consternation among Democrats about whether he was still fit to run for a second term. Look, if we finally beat Medicare, you know, we've come so far since my inauguration. On that day, I told you, as I stood in that winter, we were stood in a winter of peril and a winter of possibilities, peril and possibilities. We're in the grip of the war. We were in the grip of the worst pandemic in the century, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph Robinette Biden, Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Joseph Robinette Biden, Jr., do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability. Will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. You. Biden's speech also aimed to highlight his legacy. I ran for president four years ago because I believed and still do that the soul of America was at stake. The very nature of who we are was at stake. And that's still the case. America's an idea. An idea stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It's the most powerful idea in the history of the world. That idea is that we hold these truths to be self-evident. He went on to list some of his most significant accomplishments, including signing toxic burn pit legislation to help U.S. soldiers, passing the first major gun safety law in 30 years, overseeing a drop in the violent crime rate, nominating the first black woman to the Supreme Court, and helping to pass the country's most significant climate law. My fellow Americans, today I'm honored to officially introduce to you the next Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, Ketanji Brown Jackson. I've given my heart and my soul to our nation, like so many others. I've been blessed a million times in return the love and support of the American people. I hope you have some idea how grateful I am to all of you. Biden's speech received praise from his allies, but not everyone in his party may find it satisfying. The president offered little clarity on what ultimately led him to leave the race so late into the election season, despite previously stating that only the Lord Almighty could convince him to step aside. He also did not address the concerns of party members who criticized the late decision for largely preventing other potential Democratic candidates from mounting meaningful bids for the party's ticket. The great thing about America is here, kings and dictators do not rule. 
the people do. History is in your hands. The power is in your hands. The idea of America lies in your hands. You just have to keep faith, keep the faith. And remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. And we do it together. So let's act together. Preserve our democracy. God bless you all. May God protect our troops.